let's start the second section of uh, Archives Bootcamp. I have a uh, Spanglish, so it's a mixture of Spanish and English, so I will talk a little bit slower. Um, if you do some questions, I will appreciate uh, you speak slowly and loud. Thank you. Uh, here we will move, uh, it's uh, about fluorescent and topography and how to solve from the typical topic. The first point we will uh, look at is called fluorescent. In some books you will find, you will find that the fluorescent is a uh, thought that is not useful, but for me it's one of the two tools, main tools we have with uh, ortho K. We have topography, we have fluorescent to assess the feet and the, and the, and the, and the control of all the, the situation. So for me fluorescent is very important and it's almost an art. So that's the point we will discuss now. So the first question I have for you is, what's the <coughs> minimum amount of tear layer you are able to see with the fluorescent pattern? 20 microns. You say 20 microns? 7. 7? Probably 7, yeah. 20, mic that's the 20 microns is the right answer, but it's not the real answer. <laughs> Um, I, it was uh, once upon a time that a man draw a, a, in a computer-based system, uh, they create a program to mimic processing patterns. And in his idea, the, the, the zero green will be 20 microns. After him, it was in the 70s or some 90s, it was very 20 years ago. All the people are copying him on the books. So in all books you will read, you will see 20 microns. But uh, there is some people that say it's different. It depends on the concentration. We could discuss a lot of this point. But if you look at the tear breakout time, you are looking at around five microns of tear and you could see some green there on the core on the on the tear line. So uh, if you are looking usually every day at five microns and you see if it's green or it's dark, it's dark spots, really you could assess around seven, five, eight, ten microns, more or less. But you need to be accurate and follow the steps. So first step is to instill not so many, not so much fluorescent on the eye because if not it's on the front area of the lens. But you have a trick that is instill the fluorescent inside the lens before to put on the lens of the eye of the patient. So this makes the fluorescent assessment much quicker because you have the fluorescent under the lens directly and you have not the fluorescent in the front part of the lens that is creating disturbances. So that's a small tweak. And the next one is use a yellow filter. I'm sure all of you are using that because if not, this will be the patterns you will see compared to the right that is with the yellow filter. So yellow filter helps a lot to see much clearer. There is several yellow filters in the market, but one is the best. I, I couldn't say that the brands Oh, <laughs> start, start with B. <laughs> okay, so we continue. This is one thing we could see. Sometimes the lens is quite thick, tight, thick. So you, you could milk it, you could push a little bit to, to help the fluorescent flow under the lens. That's the first step. Okay. When that happens, you are knowing that the, the, the feet is quite tight or 
the patient has a very low, very, very bad tears, very low amount of tears. Both are possible. So the first thing I, I do is when I, I place a lens on the eye of the patient, especially if you use a trial set or empirical lens, the, the, the first thing I want is I don't want my patient wearing a lens that is not good for the patient. So I could, I don't do pick up a lens, grab a lens from a trial set or a physical lens, I put on the eye, I say, okay, close the eye, go to the waiting room for 20 minutes with the eye closed and come back. After 20 minutes, I open the eye, I look the first thing, I see an awful, horrible lens, and this patient has a staining, has a descent rate, you need to ask him to, re to come back another day, so don't do that. Just you put the lens on, you still for a scene, you, you check very quick in the overall idea is is acceptable or not. You are not looking a perfect fluorescent pattern, but you are looking that the lens is acceptable to stay 20 minutes or five minutes or half an hour on the eye of the patient. So put the lens on, fluorescent, look, okay, that's acceptable, yeah, you could to stay there. If the lens is not acceptable, take it out, replace for a new one, very quick, and then everything is going well. Okay, that's right? Okay. So, the, here we can see the three minute steps pictures. The first picture you have is just after, in, put the fluorescent on eye, one minute after. The second one is two minutes after. The third one is three minutes after. Uh, around three minutes is around the time, ideally, to see the, the picture. If you are going before, you have fluorescent the front area of the lens, and the lens has not settled down. If you are going later, uh, after four or five minutes, the fluorescent is gone. So you, need, you have a window to look the perfect force. <coughs> And last, last thing, thank you. And also you could, when you have a patient that cries a lot, you could use uh, anesthesia to draw the quantity of the tear. Okay, Jeff, please. Um, after three minutes, <coughs> will that lens not have already started to have some orthokay effect? Yes. And that's why you're seeing it? No. Yes and no. <laughs> the question is, after three minutes, some ortho K effect is done. That's yes, but you will see the same pattern after 20 minutes, or even next morning, even in 10 days. Because, uh, yes, the, the, um, we change the shape of the, of the cornea, but the changes are uh, you 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 um, you reduces the let's let's think that is epithelial everything that's not true but let's think about that you will draw around 50 microns of epithelial on apical zone you will push around 50 microns too in the landing zone and you will increase the epithelium around 20 25 microns in the reverse curve. But in general, you have the same thickness of tear. You drop, you push in the same in the in the in the on landing zones, so central area and landing zones, epithelium is compressed and drops in equal quantity. So the pattern is similar. And also, fluorescing uh, is a high 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 weight molecule. It's, I don't remember how many Daltons are, but the problem is the fluorescent acts like, uh, like an effect that is called uh, sand and waves. It means that when you have uh, sand in the, in, the, in the sea, it's moved by the, by the, wave, by the waves because it's, a high, high, it's very high uh, weight. In the fluorescent, the fluorescing trends to go to the areas that we have pulling. 
So that's why this is moving. This is moving the molecules of fluorescein. And you could see green here because it's still, instead you have a very thin tear layer. You could see it because fluorescein molecules of fluorescein is going over there and not staying in the, in the thinner areas. That is called sun and waves. That's why you will see all the time the same pattern. Com more confused or more clear now? <laughs> I see your face. <laughs> Sorry, over right there. Do you understand more or less the answer to the question? So the thing, the important thing, Jeff, is you will see the same pattern all the time. After three minutes. After three minutes, after fifteen minutes, after one hour, tomorrow. You will see the same pattern. Not exactly the same. But in order to decide if the lens is too tight or too flat, you will have the same, same result, same idea, final, the same decision. Maybe it's not exactly the same, but here, okay, this is my design. This is the design. You have two, two tiers of words. You could see the, the, we have two alignment zones. The first alignment zone is the internal one, and the second alignment zone is the external one. So in the picture one, you see that the external ring of black, this is the external alignment zone, is darker. It's darker and the internal is green, more green. So the lens is too tight in the periphery. When the lens is too tight in the periphery, you have a, 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 line, a more strong alignment on the periphery than the internal. The second picture you have the same pattern. This is darker and the internal is green. So you have pressure in the, <coughs> in the external ring and you have no pressure at the end of the reverse curve than the internal ring. So the lens is too tight. And here you can see exactly the same pattern. Yes? Same. So in the all the time you are arriving to the same conclusion. Lens in the periphery is not aligned. The lens in the periphery is too steep and too tight. So what should you should do to flatten the periphery? In all the moment you arrive to the same conclusion. Not the same picture, not the same fluorescent pattern. The only thing that changes is the central zone. Central zone is changing all along the time, but is is due that the molecules of fluorescein is moving to the river zone that is a pulling arm. Okay? And at the end, you have too much fluorescein, too much fluorescein, too much fluorescein in the central zone. So you need to uh, reduce the sagittal height of the lens. You need to flatten all this thing. Okay? That's clear? That's clear now, Jack? Okay. So the exam protocol it starts here. The first thing you should do is super leads. If you don't super the leads, you miss, you, you lose the, the upper and lower zones. You don't know what is happening in the, in the top area of the cornea on the lower area. So first thing, super leads. Second thing to do is center the lens with your fingers. Okay? and start from the center. You start from the center of the lens and we need to, to look just, just at this area, central area. The central area has a, 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 a tear layer, a small British, it's quite green there, so you know we have fluorescein under the lens. The lens is not making a contact from the back optical zone of the lens to the cornea or you have a, uh, definitely you have an area that is touching the cornea and creating a corneal insult or decay. So the first thing to assess is to be sure that you have enough tear layer under the back optical zone of the lens to avoid staining. The ideal thing is, is around 5 to 10 micros, more or less. Huh? Uh, more than that, you will obtain a narrow optical zones. Less than that, you have stain. First thing, the center is okay or is not okay. First question. Okay. Second question. 
We are going to the landing zones. Here again, my design, because it's the design I use, so it's the other picture I have. And we, this is a toric, toric Korean, toric lens. You could see the oval optical zone, that's for toric. And then we, we look on one side and the other side in order to know where the, the peripheral alignment curves are landing. Peripheral curves are too steep, so are landing on the edge, or the peripheral curves are too flat, then the lens is landing at the end of the reverse curve. When the, the peripheral curves are too, too flat, you have pressure at the end of the reverse curve. Okay. If it's too steep, you have pressure at the end, the second, and the, and the edge. So you know if you need to steepen or flatten the alignment curve. That's it. And you check that in the both meridians. So uh, we need to, to look at uh, in the flat meridian and steep meridian for a toric lens. And you are if you are using a spherical lens or a spherical cornea, you just look at all around. And you need to, to, to think in a mean average of everything. Because if you don't center the lens, then you will have more pressure in one side than the other. And you could say, oh, the lens is too tight. But in this side, I see it's too flat. So it's too flat or it's too tight? No. If you move the lens to the center, then you will see equal both sides. And think that when the lens are on cornea, the lens try to have the exact amount of uh, um, tear um, pressure. So if it's uh, in the, 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 the edge of the lenses has the, that's a, how do you call that, uh, tensions, superficial, superficial tension. The, the edge of the lens has a tension for the, for the atmosphere that that's